Hi everyone, welcome back to another video with the Virtual Group. Today's video is going to be all about our Arctic trip next year. We're going to have a quick discussion on whereabouts we're going and what time of the year, but mainly we're going to have a look at some of the equipment and kit that we'll be taking. Let's get into it. So, quick backstory about the Arctic. This is going to be my first time going, but the other guys from the Virtual Group, some of them have been four, five times, so they're well experienced, so I'm more than happy to go with them. The idea came up a couple of years ago when they wanted to go back there and I'm lucky enough to be part of that group so I'm really looking forward to uh, to, to this trip. We are planning on going, flying to Finland and going to the northern part of Finland in Kitili in the boreal forest uh, and staying there for around about a week, uh, five days. There are, as far as I know so far, about seven or eight members going. Some are from the Birchwood group, some are from uh, people or other friends that we know and there are some of the guys who I've not even met before we've just met them on uh, Facebook groups who have the same interests um, and who are a lot more experienced uh, than me anyway so we are planning to go next year in February if all pans out with uh, the coronavirus and everything we'll hopefully fly out in February during the school holidays um, and spend some time out there doing some Arctic bushcraft and just having a really nice time so we'll get into the kit. I've got two lots of the main kit to uh, to show you, um, and one of them is setting up for a project that we'll do in the later months. first bit of kit that I wanted to show you is my glove system that I'll be using out there. Now anyone who has ever watched a video on uh, Arctic clothing or has had any training will know about the layering system. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the layering system in this video, we'll save it for another video, but basically instead of having one thick piece of layer of clothing uh, on you at all times, you build up your layers with um, different items of clothing that you can put on or take off depending on how hot or cold you, you are and therefore you can mediate your temperature. So it's the same with the glove system. So to start off with I have my working gloves and these are a pair of uh, Hestra, uh, Hestra leather gloves and they come with wool liners. So these are if I need to be able to use my fingertips for uh, tying something or just feeling it about uh, these will be my work gloves. These are warm enough to be able to be on for um, a short period of time uh, while still being uh, comfortable. If I do need it to get warmer, then I can have these inside my mittens. So I'll start with these ones first. These are, I can't remember if they were German or Australian army, uh, sorry, Austrian army uh, mitten, cold weather mittens, but they have a pile lining inner uh, extremely warm and big enough to fit um, my hands in with my Hestra gloves on as well. Okay, so if I'm working around camp and I have my gloves on and they get a bit cold, then I can just put the whole thing into uh, the mittens. Now, if I'm not um, planning on doing any work at, at that moment in time, then these will be what I'll be wearing inside the mittens. So these are a boiled uh, wool and these will act as sort of like the liners for uh, these. Not that they particularly need them, they are super warm just by themselves, but for that ad added comfort, that extra bit of comfort, um, I'll be using them inside them. Unfortunately, my Hestra gloves don't fit inside these mittens, uh, or else I could have put all three of them inside of each other, but I don't need to do that. It's all about adapting your kit for the conditions that you are currently in. So if it's a bit warmer, I can just probably stick with these. Uh, if it gets a bit colder, I can take these gloves off, put my liners on, put them inside the mittens. Now, the last layer is uh, these are British Army Gore-Tex uh, over mitts, and these fit over all of the systems together. So I can have my uh, boiled wool liners on inside uh, my pile uh, lined mittens. And then uh, they are quite thin. They do have a bit of... Um, bit of insulation in uh, but mainly 
the, the waterproof uh, and it's just got that extra barrier against the cold. So this is my uh, my my glove my mitten system, my glove system uh, that, that I'll be using out there. And again, they are all to work. They all work with each other depending on when I need them. second piece of kit I wanted to talk about is the Swedish snow smock and this is the piece of kit that's going to be um, our project for the next months to work on and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the Swedish uh, snow smock, it's the first generation uh, smock and you can tell that because it doesn't have the buttons running down the middle it just has them at the collar. Now this one has been modified by a friend of mine who's coming on the trip, uh, another guy called Matt and he's modified it by putting in a fur ruff that um, is attached via vel a Velcro so it can come on and off. He's put some uh, decorative trim around the cuffs, the neckline and the bottom underneath. And he's also put some uh, pull cords in and different things to go along with uh, pulling pulls and everything like that. So this one, I, uh, this one isn't mine unfortunately uh, but this is what I want mine to look like in the end this is the one that I've ordered from military mark now they are a larger size this was an extra large and um, it is extremely large it's more than an extra large because they were built to be put over all your extra kit so if you're wearing a thick jumper or you're wearing a down jacket you can put this one uh, overneath and basically it's just your final layer it's only a thin layer there's no insulation in it but it's the final layer to put on uh, you can easily wipe snow off the top of it it just stops your uh, more important clothes getting getting wet uh, with any snow melting on them um, you can see them being used on videos from Ray Mears and Paul Kirtley. They've mod they've used them and modified them. Um, so you can see it looks a lot different from the one that Matt has modified. But that's the plan to go along with this. So I've got this one. And I've got this green one that was given to me by a friend um, for a Norway trip we went on a few years ago. So this one is the second generation smock. So this is the one which has the buttons down the middle. I believe it's called the M62. Again, it's a similar size. This one is slightly larger. Uh, this is the one that I'm actually leaning more uh, to just because of that extra room inside. You want enough room uh, inside for it not to squash any of your um, insulating layers. And this one is the baggiest at the minute. It's got a lovely feel to it. I love the colour and because I've already used it in Norway, it does have that sentimental value. So I can still do the same thing. I can still put a fur ruff inside of it. Uh, I can still put the trim around the neck and um, wrist areas. Um, the only thing is it's not white, so it depends which one would be better for the snowy background. Um, but that's each their own. Of course, so I'll be doing uh, videos in the future on modifying either one of these. I might even do two or I might give one to uh, another guy who's going and we'll see how it goes. But I just wanted to share that with you for an upcoming project um, and hopefully it'll end up looking something like this. So the fur, the fur rough around the outside, um, it's better for it to be natural fur because the snow uh, and ice, because the, the natural furs are tapered to the end, it's easier for the snow and the ice to shed off the ends of it. Uh, so the first job I've got to do is to fi is to find somewhere that will do maybe an old women's fur uh, scarf or a fur collar that was already on a coat. So I'll have a look at charity shops uh, and antique shops, anything like that. There's one near me, so I'm going to have a look into that. Well, thanks for joining me. Um, it was, again, a very quick video. It was just a sneak peek of some of the kit that we'll be taking, uh, and it, hopefully it'll be an introduction to set up 
um, further videos in the future. Um, but if you've got any questions or any advice, maybe you've been to the app before, uh, hit it down in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.